Thank you for taking a moment to learn more about our newest market report, the market for stem cell research products, current and future opportunities. I'm Mary Fallon, Marketing Sales Manager here at Bioinformatics LLC. This report analyzes the worldwide market for stem cell research products and was designed to help stem cell product suppliers optimize their presence among scientists who are using stem cells in their research. The market for stem cell research products, current and future opportunities, will help you project growth in the stem cell research products market, estimate market share of top suppliers, and determine unmet needs with respect to stem cell products. The report team was led by Dr. Nicole Kamara, Senior Science Analyst here at Bioinformatics LLC. The report includes coverage of the market as a whole, an understanding of trends, unmet needs, and how to positively impact stem cell products revenues. Additionally, this version of the report will include trending from our 2009 report on the same topic. A comprehensive study, the report includes over 35 charts and graphs that will provide you with the level of detail you need to project how the market will respond to your product development strategy. Previously one of our best sellers, most of the major suppliers will purchase this report. If you wish to take a look at the questionnaire to get a better understanding of the scope, please let me know and I'll send it to you. Be sure to note my contact information at the end of this presentation. So let's take a look at some key findings in the report. We found that the majority of stem cell research conducted in academia is focused on understanding the basic biology of stem cells, while industrial researchers' stem cell work is predominantly focused on drug discovery and development. Differentiation is the feature of stem cells most often studied, but there's also a spike in drug screening toxicity among respondents using stem cells in drug discovery and development and preclinical and clinical trials. There's also a very solid interest in self-renewal across all areas of research, with the exception of those using stem cells in preclinical and clinical trials, down to 34%. According to our research, aging and neurological disorders are the most common diseases and conditions studied using stem cells. We also found that since 2009, the relative use of induced pluripotent stem cells has increased. In the report, but not shown here, is a breakdown of embryonic versus induced pluripotent usage in each of the top disease areas. Customers are telling you what they want you to add to your product line for each stage of the workflow process. It also tells you the relative amount of time spent in each stage, which allows you to make decisions as to which of the many wants to address first with new products or features. For example, 63% of researchers who focus on expansion would like to see more products that impact the expansion stage, while 25% of these respondents would like more products that impact the differentiation stage. However, consider the fact that researchers tend to spend the least amount of time, only 15%, in the expansion stage. Scientists indicate that they obtain a greater portion of their stem cells from commercial suppliers in 2012 compared to 2009, a 16% increase. Interesting to note that the creation of stem cell lines in a laboratory, either in-house or by colleagues, has decreased by 6% since 2009. Hardest hit were national bank repositories, who have experienced a 4% decrease in researchers who report that they are purchasing stem cells from them. So why should you buy this report? This study was conducted by a staff of scientific and business analysts with years of experience in doing market research for major suppliers in the life science industry. As the sponsors of the Science Advisory Board, a global market research panel with over 71,000 members, we have direct access to our members. What this means is that we know a lot about our respondents and that the survey takers are highly qualified. This report will inform your sales strategy, and the electronic format allows you all to work from the same page. You can start using the data as soon as the report arrives in your inbox. With the purchase of our reports, you get a complimentary hour of consultation. An analyst will be available to answer questions about the report or bounce around what-if scenarios with you. I'm confident you'll find this report to be the analysis you need to inform your stem cell product development strategy. So until December 14th, as an added incentive, we're going to provide the data set for free with each order of the report for any additional internal analysis you and your team wish to explore. 
Until December 14, 2012, with each order of the report, you'll receive a free copy of the data set in an Excel format so that you can cut the data in ways that work for you. If you're ready to start using this report today, call me, I'll help you get that processed. But if you need more detail on the report, check out the executive summary on genetodrug.com. Additionally, you can order the report online. Thank you for spending a few minutes to learn more about our report and how it might be helpful to you.